Alright, hello you lovely swine, and welcome to another top 10 video. This time it's Hogs of War, a game released in the year 2000 for PC and PS1. A war game in which pigs fight each other to the death over the islands of Swill. And you know what comes with war? Well, apart from, you know, poverty and the tragic loss of innocent lives, uh, weapons! The game is full of them, from realistic weapons that were around during World War I to bizarre, kind of more made up weapons. In this countdown I'll be sharing my favourites and giving my own little opinion on each weapon. Just some notes, I will be including artillery and tank weapons, but I did not include any healing items such as healing hands or medicine balls. Remember, these are just my opinions. So let me know your favourites and what you agree or disagree with. But with that being said, let's start the top 10. Inform my mail. I got you now, piggy. So, in at number 10 is the trusty sniper rifle. The weapon of choice for the sniper and espionage class of pig. You cannot underestimate the usefulness of the sniper rifle, with a guaranteed 40 damage from any hit. You can use it at short range, but it is much more useful at long range. It can also be very useful against shooting hidden enemies, as it will always take off 20 damage. Sure, it's not the most exciting weapon, but one of the most useful. Just a scratch, sir. So yes, the weapon most associated with the hero class, of course, it's the airstrike. Those airships circling around the map are just not there for decoration. If you have an airstrike, you can call upon them to target a location before they release their deadly bombs. It is a rare pickup, although you can find airstrike crates in single player in the village people, saving private rind and fortified swine. They work much better against a large group of enemies, as the bombs do spread out, so against one enemy, they are less beneficial. I have no need for my earthly chariots now. Sayonara. This potato is for you! So, in at number 8 is the guided missile, which is the first weapon in this list you cannot use in the single player campaign making it rather rare. It's also not to be confused with the homing missile, which is a completely different weapon, which once fired will go directly towards the target. The guided missile, however, can be controlled completely by the player, allowing you to fly it around the map as much as you want before placing your explosion. This weapon is very good against a large group of enemies, as it can do up to 75 damage with a direct hit. I was hit fair and square. Has front shoulders back fire. So, as mentioned in the intro, I would be including artillery weapons. Although relatively short range, the 1,000 pound bomb is one of the most powerful weapons in the entire game, with a potential 100 damage for a direct hit. Although hard to judge how much power you need to apply, once you do get a direct hit, it is so satisfying. It is the main reason why I go for an artillery, as I find long range shell to be very hard to judge. Any other weapons are just not that useful. Now look at what you gone and done. One of the most useful weapons on this list, the jetpack. Mostly used for transportation, the jetpack allows you to fly across the screen. Whether you want to pick up a promotion medal or get a better tactical position, the jetpack is so fun to use and is literally just a massive rocket strapped onto the back of the poor pig. The rocket itself is also a weapon which can do up to 20 damage. Everyone knows their tactic where you go straight up in the air then drop your rocket straight on someone. You can do that up to three times in multiplayer if you want to take the piss a little bit. Which is why the paratroopers are very over overpowered in multiplayer. 
just remember to actually detach the rocket, otherwise there'll be pork chops all over the battlefield. Oh, they cheated. So, in at number 5 is the Super Air Burst, the first weapon to have the word super in front in this list. And if it has the word super in front, it must be super amazing. This is the upgraded version of the regular Air Burst, with an extra two bombs. Again, a very rare weapon with it only appearing once in the single player campaign in Mission 6, Under Siege. The regular air burst is already a really good weapon, but this is the same thing but with more power. And everyone knows more power is always better. Just don't get these confused with Starburst, those little sweets we get in the UK. Otherwise you might get an explosion in your mouth. I have no wish to die. <laughs> Maybe an unexpected entry on this list, the pickpocket. I find it's the most useful weapon, if you class it as a weapon. For this list, I am classing it as a weapon, since it allows you to steal weapons from enemies and then use them yourself. It is the main reason why on an average single player campaign, I would always have two espionage class of pig. If you can steal a sniper rifle from a sniper or a bazooka, from a gunner, you'll render them almost useless. It's always fun to see what you might pickpocket, and just hope you don't steal hide or suicide from a sniper. Uh, get me out of here! You cannot escape my fury! Into the top three now with another super weapon, the super shotgun. It's a big upgrade on the regular shotgun, as it launches pigs across the map. Potentially you can also make them splat right up against the edge of the map as well. Not a weapon that does too much damage with only 30, but my word is it fun to send pigs flying. And they said pigs would never fly. Clearly they did not predict the super shotgun. There are so many possibilities with this weapon, as you can launch pigs into minefields or into big bodies of water or even potentially into space with the amount of power it has. So don't let the base damage of 30 deter you, the super shotgun is a really good weapon. Thank you for letting me fight in the war. <laughs> so at number 2 is Super TNT. Well now, I can't leave out Super TNT, surely? With a max damage of 200, it can instantly kill any enemy. It appears many times in the campaign, where it's used to blow up artillery or metal boxes containing medals. But the best use is on a big crowd of pigs, all conveniently lined up next to each other. The regular TNT is also a very useful weapon and would have been on this list, but I didn't feel like I could include both TNT and Super TNT. The regular version does 50 damage and can easily send a pig to their doom, either in a minefield or a body of water. But now then, before we get to our number one, we have some honourable and dishonourable mentions. I'd like to dedicate this one to you. Would you please accept my gift? Ha! So, first honourable mention is Madness Gas, a gas that makes you go mad and fart all over the place. It's hilarious. The other good mention will be for the Mortar. If only I knew how to actually get this weapon to work every time, but when it does, it is very satisfying. First dishonorable mention is suicide. I mean, what else can you say? It's literally suicide. Why would you want to commit suicide? And the other dishonorable mention is the special ops. Literally never found any use for this. It's like a jetpack, but worse. And it's so disappointing when you knock down an airship and you get special ops rather than airstrike. But yes, let's get into our number one. I am an ex. Pig. So, in at number one is the Cluster Grenade. This one has always been my favourite weapon. 
When you pull off a perfect cluster grenade, you can do some serious damage. With numbers reaching over 100, you can send pigs flying as well across the map into bodies of water or into minefields. It does make the Grenadier class a bit overpowered in multiplayer since they can kill any pig with one good cluster grenade. But who cares? Everyone loves the cluster grenade. And I hope it's your number one as well. But thank you very much for watching my top 10 favourite Hogs of War weapons. Let me know in the comments what your favourites are, and let me know what you agree or disagree with. But for now, take care, and leave me alone.